Welcome back everyone to Mike and his whiteboard. My name is Mike, this is my whiteboard, and today we're gonna to be talking about hedging. So we talked a little bit about this when I covered Delta, and we talked about Delta hedging, which is what we're gonna talk about today, but we're also gonna talk about some other aspects of hedging that aren't so orthodox. We're gonna look at some unorthodox ways of hedging our portfolio, and I think it's gonna be very revelatory in that sense. So let's get right into it, and we'll talk about the difference between just buying stock and using a covered call instead to hedge because at the end of the day, a covered call is a form of hedging stock. So when we look at hedging, we're basically looking at minimizing risk. So when we're looking at minimizing risk, when we're talking about long stock, I've got this full circle here and it's signifying directional risk. So if I'm just buying long stock and I'm fully exposed with long stock, I'm also fully exposed to that directional risk. However, if I use a covered call instead, which is buying stock and selling a call against it, which have differing assumptions in terms of direction, what I do is I take a chunk of that directional risk out of the equation and it reduces that directional risk for me. So this is great for a few reasons and we're gonna talk about that on the next slide here. So when we go to the next slide, we're gonna be talking about how we can use long stock and selling a call against it and what that means directionally. So we know that if I'm buying 100 shares of stock, let's say at $50, which would be an investment of $5,000 in a cash or IRA account, that's going to be a bullish assumption. So again, a bullish assumption just means that I want the stock or underlying to go up. So if I buy shares of stock, for me to profit, I would sell those shares for a higher amount. So obviously I would want that underlying to go up in price for me to do that. What I can do instead of just buying the long shares is also sell a call against it. So we have to remember that a call contract or any option contract for that matter, unless you're trading a mini, is going to represent 100 shares of long or short stock. So in this case, if I'm selling a call contract, at expiration, it's going to represent 100 short shares of stock. So if I'm buying 100 shares at 50, and I'm selling a short call at 55, which still gives me some room to the upside to be profitable, and I'm also collecting a credit of $1.50, which is really $150, and it also has a bearish assumption, what this does is it gives me two positions that battle against each other, but my long shares will eventually outweigh that short share loss. So let's say if the stock goes from 50 to 60, I would see the profit all the way up to my short call at 55, but once that uh, stock price reaches that 55 strike, that's when the profits would be offset. Because if I've got long shares and short shares, so 100 long shares and 100 short shares at 55, any movement above 55 is going to be a wash. So this would still be a profitable situation, but I'm hedging my risk to the downside as well. So it's something we covered in Delta, and if you missed that segment, you can go to find shows at the top of Go down to Mike and his whiteboard and it'll be there. But we covered how basically selling a call against shares, and we also have a segment on covered call which went into this pretty in depth, which it basically reduces our directional risk to the downside. And also when we're selling a call against it, we're increasing our probability of profit, which is really what we're trying to do here as well. So if we go on to the next slide, we're gonna be talking about another way we can hedge. So doing covered calls is not the only way to hedge our portfolio. We can actually get pretty creative with it. So I think it really comes down to correlation and understanding correlation. So if I have a covered call in Apple, for example, and let's say I want to hedge some of those deltas. Maybe I'm not comfortable with having long deltas in Apple. Maybe I wanna to look to neutralize those a bit. Instead of doing another trade in Apple, I could look at other correlated underlyings. So for example, the Qs, which has a very high correlation with Apple, I could do a negative or bearish assumption in that underlying. So let's say I've got a high IV environment. Maybe I would look to sell a call spread in the Qs, which would effectively hedge my position in Apple. So if, my, if for whatever reason my main portfolio is based on Apple stock and I'm looking to hedge it, I could use the Qs as a way to hedge it. Because at the end of the day, a covered call is a bullish assumption where a short call spread would be a bearish assumption. 
Also, what I could do if I didn't want to look at that is I could look at maybe SPY. So SPY and Apple have a very high correlation. Apple actually makes up a good, a good sec sector of the SPY stocks that are considered in that bucket. And maybe instead of a call spread, if I'm not very risk averse, I could maybe just short a call outright. So there's different ways we can do that. And even in low IV environments, maybe if I'm not happy with the implied volatility in the market, but I still wanna hedge my position in Apple some way, maybe I'd look at a long put spread, which would pretty much be unaffected or maybe benefit from an increase in implied volatility. Or if I just wanna avoid the options in general, maybe I could short stock in SPY. So I don't have to short 100 shares of stock, maybe I could short 15 or 20 shares, which would give me a, a small notional value and a small hedge against my long stock in Apple. So these are different ways that we can hedge our positions and really it all boils down to understanding what underlyings are correlated and what we can do to be creative to hedge against our position. And really, once we understand how everything works together, that gives us a better understanding of what we're doing in our portfolio as a whole. So another way we can measure hedging is gonna be on the next slide, and that's what we're talking about when we talk about delta hedging. So again, if you missed the delta segment, it was a previous whiteboard segment, you can definitely check it out. But really what delta hedging is, is just measuring your deltas and then using the option delta, deltas to offset that. So when we're talking about shares of stock, if I'm buying 100 shares of stock, I would have a positive 100 delta in that underlying. So each share of stock represents one delta. Also, if I've got 200 shares of stock, then I would see a positive 200 delta. If I had short shares, it would be just the opposite. So if I shorted these shares outright, I would see negative 200 delta. And if I shorted these 100 shares, I would see negative 100 delta. So what I can do to utilize that in my portfolio as a hedge is look at the option delta if I'm going to, for example, create a covered call position. So there's three terms here that are great to understand. And we have under hedging, which is basically hedging under 100% of that delta value. So let's say I've got 100 shares of stock at 100 delta. An example of an under hedge, which would be just a standard covered call. So if I sell an, a call option with a 30 delta, it would actually be a negative 30 delta since it's bearish and I'm selling a call. So now instead of having 100 shares or 100 deltas of exposure, I would have 70 deltas of exposure because I've got 100 shares of long stock, but negative 30 delta on my short call. Another thing I can do is a perfect hedge. So a perfect hedge would be using multiple call contracts, for example, to perfectly hedge my scenario. So let's jump down to 200 shares. So let's say I've got 200 shares of long stock, and I know that selling an at the money call would give me roughly negative 50 delta. So what I'd have to do to perfectly hedge that is sell four calls against it. So if I've got 200 positive deltas with my 200 shares, and I sell, four calls that have negative 50 delta each, then my delta should be pretty neutral, it should be pretty close to zero. And lastly, what we can do is over hedge. So let's say we, we're holding on to stock, but we're really not comfortable with what might ha be happening, but for whatever reason, we still wanna hold the stock. Instead of getting out of it, maybe we see some downside potential in the future, we could over hedge the position. It's pretty rare that we would do this, normally we would just get out, but we can always overhedge the position. So let's say I've got 100 shares of stock and I've got 100 delta. So one thing I could do is look to sell maybe three at the money calls. So if I sold three at the money calls that had negative 50 delta, that would give me negative 150 delta against my 100 delta here. So I would actually have a net negative 50 delta position in this scenario. So what's really important to know is that when we're dealing with covered calls, for example, which is what we've been using in this example. If I've got 100 shares of stock, I can sell one option against it and I won't have any additional risk. If I sell more than one option, so if I sell two options, for example, my risk is defined on my 100 shares in my short call. That's together, the, the risk can be associated with one another. But since I don't have another 100 shares that represents my short call, my additional short call, I'm actually exposed to one naked short call. So it's really important to know and remember that each option contract that we're selling 
must be associated with 100 shares of stock for it to be correctly correlated in terms of risk. So if we don't want any additional upside risk, then we need to be mindful of the fact that 100 shares of stock is associated with one short call and that risk will outweigh itself. Another thing to consider when we're talking about delta hedging is that it's not static. So this is considered a form of dynamic hedging. So if I, for example, have 100 long shares and I sell a call against it, let's say it's an out of the money call with a 30 delta like we talked about first. So now I've got a positive 70 delta. So everything's fine. But if the stock price starts to move down, since I sold the, the call out of the money, it's now going to be farther out of the money, which means my delta is going to be lower. So let's say my delta is now a, a 15 delta negative. So if I have 100 shares of stock, which is going to be a static delta, but now I'm selling a call that's only a 15 delta, now I've got an 85 delta. So it's important to understand the relationship and basically the further out of the money an option goes or is, the smaller the delta it will be. So the relationship here, even if I create a perfect hedge, when the stock price moves, that hedge is going to change. So that's another thing to, to be mindful of when we're delta hedging dynamically. So that's been a lot, but we'll wrap it all together with some tape takeaways here. So. Hedging can reduce our risk. So instead of just buying 100 shares of long stock, something we can do is create a covered call. So it not only helps us on the downside if the stock price moves down, it increases our probability of profit as well. So the only thing we're really reducing is our max profit. So we don't have that unlimited profitability, but we're having that increased probability of profit, which is going to help us in the long run. Another takeaway is that deploying opposite strategies is our go-to. So whether that be deploying an opposite strategy in a positive correlated underlying, or if you want to get creative, we can create a bullish strategy in both. Like if I've got an underlying that is completely negatively correlated with another, so if an underlying goes up and it has a negative correlation with an under, another underlying, the other underlying should go down. So if I've got two situations where I know that's true, if I create a bullish scenario in both of those, that's a technically a way of hedging one of those positions. So we can get creative with it, and that's one of the beauties of options trading. Another takeaway is that understanding correlation is key. So if I've got position in Apple, like we talked about in the previous example, and I want to hedge that position elsewhere, maybe I would look to use the Qs, QQQ, or SPY, which is an ETF of the S&P 500. So there's many ways we can hedge. And lastly, we use Delta to measure our hedges. And this is really key, especially when we're getting really down into it and understanding where we want our portfolio Delta to be. It's really important to understand how we can use Delta to hedge that position, but it's even more important to understand that that number is not static. So it will change as the underlyings move. So this has been Hedging. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Thanks so much for tuning in. My name is Mike. If you've got any questions or feedback at all, shoot it over to support at doe.com or support at or you can shoot me a tweet at doetradermike. We're going to be off tomorrow, but we'll see you on Tuesday. What's up everyone? Thanks for watching our video. Click below to watch more videos, subscribe to our channel, and visit our website at